Quantum computing in the KPC universality class. I'm guessing probably that most of the people who are looking or clicking on this video, they probably know more about the quantum computing side rather than the KPZ universality side class of things. But I'm sure at the same time that there are probably some people who are more interested in the universality class, which is more the type of rigorous, uh, you know, interpretation or understanding that, I'm, that I've been trying to gain about this universality class. And it relates to actually some experimental information from Google Quantum AI because <clears throat> when you're trying to characterize the KPZ universality class, like I've talked about in one of my other videos on the channel, it relates to what do you hope to gain from universality in statistical physics? And it's just basically saying that, roughly speaking, you can group together a bunch of models all together in which you can characterize the order of their lower and higher order statistics, which completely coincide with each other. And how the finding from Google comes into play is because they demonstrated from a previous conjecture and, you know, I think some seminal work in the 80s in which some people had established that the one, de the one dimensional Heisenberg spin chain at infinite temperature does, ex does exhibit some aspects of KPZ universality, namely that its mean or its covariance or other types of statistics such as the spin-spin correlations or other types of ways that you can formulate correlations in the systems or representations for these correlations even like how i've been looking for vertex add in the case of vertex models for my previous papers recently on the archive from a few weeks ago um, on september 8th you can establish a way to you know analyze these types of quantities and different types of thermodynamic limit or different homo you know under or i or even under the presence of like how we say in vertex models either the presence of homogeneities or inhomogeneities and um, yeah, that played a really big role in terms of uh, some of my earlier work in which I was looking more at Poisson structure just for the inhomogeneous six vertex model at first. And, you know, another aspect relating to universality is that you can try to make use of these notions of common behavior or behavior of the statistics within finite volume by looking at um, different types of uh, ways to construct uh, you know, like construct, uh, you know, boundary conditions and how you would expect the system to macroscopically behave and what would be some corresponding properties of its limit shapes. So just when you think about it like this, you know, maybe adopt a little bit of a more broad perspective. These experimental results, they're pretty much demonstrating that the, you know, the lower order statistics with a back of the envelope type of computation or calculation, they agree with what, with the lower order statistics that are that are provided for the KPZ universality class. But when you include more terms, which can be associated with taking a weak finite volume limit and going to infinite uh, infinite system size, then there can be, you know, then that can be a completely different story in which those lower order statistics in the, in the higher order regime, when you include all of the relevant terms of the expansion for these, for such statistics, then it would diverge from, it would end up diverging from what would be predicted by the KPZ universality class. So yeah, I just thought that that was a really interesting topic of discussion because obviously I didn't, um, you know, I don't have as much experience in trying to simulate spin chains using like 54 qubits, what Google Quantum AI had did because they had to undoubtedly stack a couple of Sycamore processors together in parallel so that the 54 qubits could logically, um, <clears throat> you know, could logically communicate with each other throughout the time evolution at infinite temperature of this Heisenberg spin chain. But I just think that's really interesting because having that type of an intuition about what you would expect for an experiment to do, it's kind of like what I think about or what a lot of people try to think about who even though they're more theoretically minded, they really try to think about these types of connections in their head and to try to anticipate the physical behavior of the system without having to actually end up running any of the simulations at all. And when you can kind of build up this intuition, it just really helps because then it can maybe help you think about more dramatic types of connections like how I tried to think about with the 20 vertex model and how I've also been thinking about for some other uh, related models in future upcoming work.